We already went over all the best armors and weapons in Horizon Forbidden West and how to get them, but I can't see why you might have trouble actually getting the medals in the arena and we were still figuring out how to spawn special Apex variants needed for these items and upgrades. Well, I now completed all the arena challenges and got some very helpful tips that you totally want to be using and also things you just want to do to get the best items the game has to offer. So let's immediately touch on the Apex variants before I go in depth on the arena because turns out that these higher level variants of machines spawn way more at night and I want to thank everyone who noted this in the comments under a recent video and Surya for reaching out with a video explaining this as well and that explains why I rarely saw any apex variants because I always play during morning so you have the best lights for the videos but then you will only see a regular slitter fang over here on the map but then the moment you go to a nearby shelter and select night and then return to that same location you will see that it switched to the apex variant at least in this location. So I could now take this Apex Slither Fang out for its heart and then exchange it for the legendary Tanakh Tactician Armor at Thornmarsh. One important thing to know though is that these Apex Hearts and I hope they change this, but you find them under valuables to sell. So if you don't pay attention and are just like selling everything at once, then high chance that you might sell Apex Hearts. So be on the lookout for that. The other legendary armor, the Utaru Winter Weave, requires Apex Dreadwing, which I even at night did not spot at the dedicated Dreadwing site. I think this one unlocks also later on in the game. But for the Apex variant, I needed to go over here on the map. Then you find both a Stormbird and a Dreadwing, but not noted on the map with an icon. And they were both Apex when I went to this location at night. So yes, taking them out is of course easier said than done. But I could luckily focus on the Stormbird first before the Dreadwing would join the fight. I used a Plasma weapon because they're both weak against that element. And also one time I used a Smoke Bomb to get some breathing room so I could heal up and then start the attack again. Like, don't sleep on these tools. They are amazing to get an edge. And the best part is that these tools cost you nothing in the arena and i saw many people having issues with this type of content that you can of course unlock after the broken sky main mission and then doing the main mission that follows go over here on the map talk to the two ladies and finish their side quest and they can access this activity and make your way through the increasingly difficult challenges so as you might have noticed the final objective in each difficulty section gives you a set loadout and also has you compete in an online leaderboard but for all the other challenges you have to use your own gear weapons and tools and you can really use that to your advantage so i will tell you how so you can get the best weapons and armor sets in the game of course leaving a like on the video only costs one second of your time would really help me out and subscribe for way more horizon content like this for one you want to go in well prepared making a safe before you enter the arena is smart because if you lose a couple of times during one single challenge you will lose a ton of metal shards so they can just reload the save you just made before that encounter to save a ton of money. And also before you talk to the arena master, restock all your materials at the stash, make sure all your ammo types are fully crafted and if you have that workbench skill, totally do it at the workbench because that will cost you less resources. But you also want to make sure that you have the right tools with you, like you can only carry a few potions at one time depending on how big your pouch is and if you use a weapon with overdraw then having the potion that increases the damage when you use overdraw by 25% will be very nice it's only active for 90 seconds but that is during most of the arena fight I use two large health potions to quickly keep me in the fight when needed and you can also grab stamina potions so you're able to spam the weapon techniques although what I found is that using food is even better like I would totally combine all these tips I would also buy a smoke bomb before you get into the arena and use them a lot because it really creates an easy opening against machines make sure that you just have the time to react and kill a machine really fast but I found that food had the biggest impact and then in particular I'm talking about the great MRE an amazing weapon stamina regen boost which you can buy at the cook at Thornmarsh over here I had to create a job to see where I could find the 
shellfish claw in order to buy it. Wasn't that hard and you just need one. That will already be a game changer. Like I don't use it at the start of every arena encounter. So the moment I glide off, I immediately take this food. And this will not only give me a constant stamina regen buff during these encounters. But also give me a ton of extra health immediately. So I can take way more damage before having to use a potion or berries. It's really good it's also active for seven minutes so it goes way beyond the normal time it takes to clear an arena challenge and this means that you can use your weapon techniques just way more often to also make these encounters go way faster so the first time i went through the arena challenges i used warrior bows so the renegade warrior bow for the frost arrows and the death rattle warrior bow for the damage after freezing these enemies it's a pretty solid tactic you can buy both bows also at the hunter fender in thor marsh of course, you could also get the Karja Bane legendary variant you get by doing all the races, which is also easy enough. I also used the Critical Boost Valor Surge in combination to make it even stronger, and then I would do crits with these Rapid Fire bows way more often. Of course, use other elemental weapons to make sure the status effect that the machine is weak against is applied. So I did this tactic before finishing the main story. It got me pretty far, but then after finishing the main story, I figured out that you can way better use very ammo hungry explosive weapons because again everything you do during the arena battle doesn't cost you anything so using a spike thrower here against the sun wings is totally valid as there's no ammo cost whatsoever the blossling also makes these encounters way easier because you do not even have to apply the elemental effect to already do a lot of damage also use the advanced ammo options as much as possible as again the extra ammo cost doesn't matter at all so you can just benefit from the extra damage so yeah i would totally recommend that if you want to get all the legendary weapons and gear in the arena just make sure that you get the wings of the 10 blast sling from doing all the black boxes first doesn't require a lot of skill or time at all and i already went over this weapon of course in my best weapons video there i also talked about the sky killer spike thrower which you get from a side quest over here on the map I will leave a link to the video at the end of this one and also in the video description. To get them, you totally have to be near the end of the game, but I would overall recommend that it's nice to just focus on the arena after having already finished the main story. And you saw me mostly use the Tanakh Vindicator armor and the Tanakh Skirmisher armor, which you can both get very early. I mentioned that in my things you want to get early video. So I think using these for the extra ranged enhancements is going to be great. So combine that with a Blast Sling and a Spike Thrower. The two legendaries I mentioned are your best option. And of course also use the other tips I mentioned. A Smoke Bomb, use potions and the food buffs and then the arena should be way more manageable. Or you could also turn the difficulty down to story and blast through it. But yeah, that is totally less fun. Of course, subscribe for way more Horizon videos if you haven't already. A like on the video would really help me out. And check out that video on the best weapons in the game, including the legendaries I mentioned and all the other legendaries and how to get them. For now though, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.